Hi everybody, it's Dan O'Connor, and I got a question on one of the last videos that I posted. Uh, someone asked me, let me see, I don't know if I can read or not. <laughs> someone asked me if they could say to a customer, shall I send that out at five for you? And it was in reference to a video that I had just done, a lesson about professional communication and how professional communication really says to your customers, hey, I have been practicing for this conversation my whole life. I have been preparing to meet you since long before you and I ever met. I have been investing in my professional development and therefore you're going to trust me and you're going to have faith that if any problem arises during our interaction, I will most easily solve it. Therefore, you'll have more faith in me and my company and everybody else involved here. That's what speaking professionally does at work. That said, <laughs> sometimes we are, have confusion over what is and is not professional language. So let me clarify her question. Her question was, can I say to a customer, shall I send that out for you by five? If you have made that mistake, don't make it again. And it's a simple mistake that most people make and most people will not notice that you're making that mistake, but other savvy communicators might. So remember, by the way, if you have questions like this, to put them in the comments below and add your Twitter name and I will send you a live uh, Periscope video to answer them. But here's the reason you do not wanna say, shall I do that for you at work? Because the word shall, first of all, we do not use it in modern US English. So if you're uh, speaking to a US business person, you can just eliminate that and you solve the problem right there. But the way that it's used is this, shall means it is my intention or it is set in stone, it is already scheduled for the future. And it is used for first person, I or we. For example, I shall do that for you at five. <laughs> we shall do that for you at five. Or like if it's my intention, I shall be the next manager of this department. And for third person, she, he, they, you just use the word will. They will send that out for you by five. I shall, okay? So that's what you're doing. Therefore, if you're saying to a customer, shall I send that out for you by five? You're really asking them, will I send that out for you by five? Therefore, you are projecting on them the title or the, the role of scheduler, or ipso facto, you're projecting on them the role and title of soothsayer, clairvoyant, and modern day psychic. So you probably didn't mean to do that based on the little that I gathered from your question. I'm guessing that that wasn't your intention. So remember, if you're going to use the word shall, it means it is my intention to do so, or I really, really, really want to do so, and I'm gonna set it in stone. And we tend not to use it in modern day English. And the reason we want to speak that level of professionalism at work is because we're letting people know, hey, I invest in me. And therefore, I'm investing in you before we even met. Isn't that great? And that said, by the way, I had another question about uh, <laughs> when you call people ma'am or sir or Mr. O'Connor, for example, at work, is there a way to do that so that you're not sounding subservient or weak? That was an interesting question because I think you'll find the answer interesting or revealing as well. So make sure to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so, so that you can be notified when we go live with that. Uh, and if you have not yet done so, stop by Dan O'Connor Training and check out some of the great resources that we have there. And before I stop, because I just wanted to quickly upload that one, uh, I want to check to see if I have any questions, but to do that, I have to put on my glasses because as you might not know, I can't see a thing. So let me see, <laughs> um, let me see, let me see. Okay. Hi, Jupiter. <laughs> chakra queen. Oh, limitation breaker and shock. You're a chakra queen? Jupiter, you know, we have to do some live, uh, some live chakra tuning one day because I just got a big Tibetan singing bowl made out of a big quartz that's made specifically to align your, the, the chakra that's right beneath your navel. Uh, I would love to have your thoughts on that because I don't know anything about it. I just thought it was really cool and thought, well, if mine's out of line, I better get it in line. And they said it would do that. Um, that would be fun. <laughs> hey, Meredith. Thank you, Meredith. You're awesome too. And I'm trying to find any questions. Um, oh, cool. I don't have any yet. <laughs> Thanks, Jupiter. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And if you have any more questions like this, just remember, uh, I will answer them either here on YouTube or send you a Periscope video. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And this is Dan O'Connor signing off. Oh, I think I'm signing off. I don't even know how.